Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to MIG Monday. By now, I'm guessing that quite a few of you have bought some of these little home MIG welders. This happens to be the Everlast Power MIG 140E. You notice it just says MIG, and I'm sure that's what most of you are going to do, MIG welding, which, of course, obviously involves a shielding gas. Uh, in some previous episodes, we've covered the pros and cons of shielding gas, what you have to be aware of uh, to protect the gas so it doesn't blow away and so forth. But there are times where that's not going to be able to be done, and you're going to need to weld outdoors. It might be a little breezy. You might be welding on a material that uh, does not suitable for welding with MIGs, such as galvanized. And so what are you going to do in a case like that? Well, the answer to that is a, is a self-shielded wire or a flux cord wire. Uh, if you have a little machine like this, even though it doesn't say anything flux cord on the front, most of these small MIG welders can also weld with a flux cord wire. You have to make a few changes to be able to accommodate that, not only in the setup of the machine, but even in somewhat in your welding procedure. And what I'd like to do now is kind of go over changing over a machine from, from MIG wire to flux cord wire. It's a pretty simple thing, uh, and we'll progress through here, and you'll see that it's uh, a mighty easy thing to do, and you can do it very quickly at home. So what I'm going to do is just kind of slide this around a little bit so I can see it a little better and still look at you and talk to you. But what we have inside here, I've got my, my MIG wire already in here. And as you can see, it goes into this coiled spring. This is the liner. Now, when you change over wire, sometimes if you, you know, most of these machines come where this, this liner accommodates a couple of sizes. So as long as you're still changing over and staying within the size range of the, that's designated for that particular liner, you don't have to worry about changing out the liner. Uh, if it, you go to a bigger size where it won't accommodate, then of course then you've got to change the liner. But that's, for the home guy, that's a pretty rare occurrence. Um, <clears throat> I guess one of the first things we want to talk about is, is the polarity. You know, we all know that MIG welding is done with positive polarity. Well, the difference when you get into a, a self-shielded wire or a cord wire like this, flux cord wire, that gets welded with negative polarity, okay? So the first thing we have to do is change the polarity output of the machine. Now, on this particular machine, I, I hope, hopefully you can see right over here, I'll use this screwdriver to point. You got these two, two wires right here, and there's, they, they're attached at two points in here, one marked negative, one marked positive. So you, you know which one is, even without looking to see which one is positive, the one that's connected, for, you know, that's, the positive is referring to the welding polarity, what the polarity is at the end of the wire, okay, when you're making your weld. The positive one for MIG welding, if you follow this cable down, it just comes right from this stud right here, right around to the drive roll assembly, and that's where it's attached, so that the power, the current goes right there. When I want to change polarity, all I do is reverse, well, of course, the negative, let me digress a little bit, the negative cable comes around, and that is... The end of this cable is what is attached to the negative stud over here. So all I'm going to do is switch those two wires. Pretty simple and easy to do. Take, in this case, I can use a screwdriver or a nut driver or a wrench. I'm just going to lean down in here and unscrew this one. Okay, I'm going to remove the nut and washer so I don't, the bolt and the washer so I don't lose them. I'm going to disconnect the negative connection and then I can just lift it away and right down into where the positive one was before and screw that in. I'll just screw that down good and snug. Take the other bolt, take the free end of this wire, put that in there. Get that up and then And tighten that up. Now, so now the wire that leads from the negative stud goes down to the dry roll block, and the one that comes from the positive stud goes out to my ground clamp. So now I have negative polarity, which is required for the cord wire. <coughs> now, the other issues that we have to deal with now, of course, the wire itself. So what I'm going to do now is just pull this wire out of here. And in, in this machine, you don't even need a wrench to take the wire off. Just unscrew here and pop that off and you don't want to lose control of the end but I'm just going to, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can 
cut the wire right here and maintain control of the end of the wire and then pull the wire out of the gun. Or if you're frugal like I am, you can just kind of back it out of the gun by releasing the pressure on the drive rolls and then just turn the wire. And you just want to make sure that when the end finally comes through, that it doesn't spring through. And that way you save about eight or nine feet of wire. There we go, right there. And then I'm going to pull the reel off. And then inside the plastic reel, there's little holes at the side of the reel. You can just stick the wire through there, pull it up a little bit snug, and bend it over. And that'll hold that in place. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before I install the cord wire, we've got to stop and think about it a little bit. This is solid wire. The drive roll that we use is just a U-shaped drive roll, and the ability to propel the wire down the, down the gun is because we're pinching the wire between an idle roll and the drive roll. Cord wire is hollow. You pinch it too hard, and it's going to crush or misshape, and then you're going to have feeding problems. It won't fit out through the contact tip right. Uh, you're going to have a multitude of issues. So typically, when you're running cord wire, you put in a different type of drive roll. And here we go with this. Again, it's just a matter of, you know, on this particular unit, uh, you just unscrew this little screw right here, and the drive roll slides off of the shaft. Now, I'm gonna set this off where I won't lose it. This is the drive roll. If you look at it, it's, there's, there's two different sizes here, so you can accommodate two different size MIG wires. I'm gonna take this, set it aside, and get my, uh, my knurled drive roll. Ha, all right. That's my off-camera assistant, folks. Okay, now, <clears throat> I don't know if you can get a close-up of this drive roll or not, but you'll see there's little serrations all the way around inside the groove. And what those do is they grip the wire without having to put excessive force on it or pinch against it to feed it. The little, these little serrations grab the wire and propel it through. It's really a pretty, pretty important issue with the, with the flux cord wire. So, now, what you do is you, you have to read what size groove you have because this, is, this will accommodate, just like the other one, two different size wires. So I know which size I'm gonna have here, the 030. So I'm gonna put that on there like so. and reinstall this. There's a keyway here, you just line up and push it in place. Then you reinplace, screw this back in down snug, and the drive roll's ready to go. Very easy. Now, this is gonna be the tricky part for me because I'm gonna do this kind of off balance and not try to lose control of the end of the wire. Now when you first feed off some wire, I'm gonna do a little bit here, you can see it's got a curve to it. And what we have to do is feed it through kind of straight. So if you just kind of back bend it a little bit, you know, just bend it the opposite way a little bit so it gets relatively straight right there. Get my pliers. Cut that off. And again, not losing control of the end, I can send it right down to that liner. And into the outgoing guide tube. This little black thing is called the guide tube. This is the ingoing guide tube and the outgoing guide tube, even though it's, this one's uh, brass and this one's plastic. Once it gets in there, to maintain control of the wire, all I have to do is close this back down, close the drive roll setup, and now I've got pretty good control over the wire. Just put it on here. And then put this back on the spring. and just tighten it down till I get a slight resistance on the roll so it doesn't free spin on me. And we should be good to go. Now, the next step is to run it down the gun. And to make that pretty easy, one of the best things to do to have minimal trouble with that is just to remove the contact tip. Because I'll show you here in a minute. It's a pretty small hole and there's a, like a little shoulder here. So if the wire's coming through, if it hits against the, the shoulder, it may not come all the way through the contact tip, but by taking the contact tip out temporarily, now it's just a matter of turning the machine on. Okay. 
and pulling the trigger and you'll see that it'll start to feed the wire. And all I have to do is wait for it to come down here. Now I could do a couple things. I could turn the wire feed speed up real, real high and it'll feed through faster. But I'm gonna take this opportunity to just to mention one other feature that this, well, this machine uh, and other small machines can do too. This one particularly uh, has a little uh, amphenol on the front where you can attach a spool gun if you wanna weld aluminum. Uh, for the home hobby guy, however, spool gun isn't really a great option, I mean, just because of cost. Uh, with the uh, proper liner and the proper guide tubes, and here my wire has now come through, but just to finish that topic, remember I pointed out this little spring liner? Well, inside here is also a spring liner just like that. That's a kind of a matching deal. Uh, when you're feeding aluminum, you have to use polished drive rolls, and there's a real deep U. It's not the same U-shaped drive roll that you have on a MIG wire. It's an even deeper U because it, that's going to deform even easier than the, than the uh, cord wire. So it's a, a whole different set of drive rolls, and it requires a nylon liner to smooth feed it because aluminum is very, very difficult to, to feed, uh, especially through a gun like this. To ex ensure your best success, you want to keep the gun as absolutely as straight as possible. You, you would never want to try and aluminum well with it all coiled around like I've got it here. You'd want to kind of extend it out. But anyway, so now we've, we've got our <coughs> flux cord wire there. I just put the contact tip back on. And <laughs> let me snip this off at a little bit of an angle, make it a little easier to get on there. This is kind of, a, actually I can, this, this little uh, interruption here that I'll call it, uh, is kind of uh, a good example of what happens if you have the dry rolls down too tight and stuff. It gets misshapen when I clip it at the end. It's not a solid wire, so it mashes down a little bit and it doesn't feed well through the hole. So that, you can use that as a little reminder too that any kind of excess pressure on this wire uh, or you try to feed this wire with regular dry rolls instead of the neural dry rolls, uh, you're gonna end up having some, some issues like that. So we're back. Now, we don't really need the gas cone on this because it's a, it's a self-sealed process, there is no gas, but there's also spatter and so forth, and you really don't want to get the gas holes and stuff that are in the torch here uh, all boogered up with spatter and, and stuff. So it's not a bad idea to just put the gas cone back on, even though we're not using it to direct any gas or anything. So, but there you have it, a pretty easy setup. Adds to the flexibility of the equipment, allows you to weld under maybe more harsh conditions where, where air movement or something is not gonna allow you to MIG weld. Uh, and that, uh, that does it. Very easy to do. So hope you learned something on this one and we'll see you again next time around.